All right, what is up everyone? We are back and today I am hopefully going to change your guys' minds on Prodigy Discs. Let's get into it. So I'm a big advocate on Prodigy. I've thrown Prodigy probably since I started. I know very shortly after I began, um, I put Prodigy in the bag. At one point I was literally full bag was Prodigy. And recently after all like the Ganon Burr stuff kind of went down and he left and was talking trash on it, the flashing and all that stuff. Prodigy has been a substantial decline. And so I'm here to hopefully kind of showcase their discs a little bit. Not that I'm like the best person to do so. However, I know there's a lot of people that don't even give it a thought. So I've got probably their most popular molds. A lot of the molds that I threw, we're gonna play nine holes at Lake Springfield today, a really tough course. So hopefully I can throw them well and maybe, uh, maybe change your minds a little bit. I definitely do see them like the the arguments to be made with the flashing and stuff however a lot of people that said that that all started about two years ago kind of when that stuff went down i know gannon left last year but he was already kind of complaining about it that like at the beginning of the season i think immediately they kind of went into scramble mode um and started kind of reinventing their plastic a little bit and it like the, all the new stuff i can't say enough good things about i love it i do see the complaints for the old stuff but if you start buying their newer stuff incredible all right so i've got six molds here a2, this one was in my bag for a really, really long time. This is an F7, this is 400 plastic. This is their plastic, super gummy, super tacky. We have the FX3, this, uh, this one wasn't in my bag. I bagged an FX3 a while ago and then I eventually lost it. But this is the 500 plastic, same thing. It's just a touch stiffer, but still gummy, still nice and tacky, feels really good in the hands, no flashing. Next up is the FX2. Uh, this one is not in my bag. I actually got this from Ezra Robinson uh, out of wild, so I really don't want to lose it. But right now I currently have two FX2s in my bag. I really like it. They fly very similar to like Raptors uh, and Firebirds, so I really like that a lot. The next we have this D1. I'm a big fan of just overstable drivers. I also got this one from Ezra um, at Idle Wild, so really can't lose this one either. The PA3, this one was in my bag for a while. This is easily top five putter in the game right now no questions asked, um, could be higher, honestly. It's just like anything you could ask, flat putter with the bead. It's just a great putter. And last, I have probably my favorite mid of all time is the M2. This is an older one, and honestly, it does have a bit of flashing, but not enough where I'm like, I'm really going to complain about it. I have an M2 in my bag that's been in my bag for probably three and a half-ish years, I'm guessing, um, but I didn't bring my bag today. This is all this kind of just stuff I had in my back stock, you know, in the van. Um, and so we've got this one, which I've actually been kind of wanting to work in the bag because I'm mold minimalizing anyways, but this is it. So like I said, we're at Lake Springfield. We're gonna, I'm just going to bounce around. I'm not going to play the front nine or the back nine or anything like that. I'm going to bounce around kind of the holes that film the best, to be honest with you. There's some where it's like blind tee shots and you can't really see, so I'm not going to play those holes because it just doesn't look great, frankly. But hole one here, 294, straight up the hill, and it is straight up the hill. Super crazy elevation change. It's 294. It probably plays closer to 350. Like a full power, like flex forehand for me. Uh, I can definitely get up in the circle, but it's it's a pump to get up there. So, all right, especially with no warm up, this should be interesting. I think anything where I don't burn it into the hill left is going to be a success for this one off the tee here. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I think I'm up there in circle one. How about that? Yeah, it's tough. I think the main argument for Prodigy at the moment is that the flashing on the discs is bad. And while, like, if you've made that argument, you were right at one point. But I think we have, like, one or two discs in the store right now that have pretty bad flashing. But they're, like, they're discs that, like, when we first ordered Prodigy, like, a year and a half ago, it's still from then. If you come in and feel any of the new stuff any of the fractal stuff, any of the new 400 plastic, anything like that, it's gonna be money, I promise you. I don't know if you could tell with me talking right there, but yeah, that hill's pretty brutal. And while you're talking and carrying a tripod, really takes it out of you. I'm definitely in circle two. I was a little short, it was a fine shot, but a little short. We're going with the PA3 for putter today. I had the, this is 400G, this is more premium plastic if you're not familiar. I had a 350G, which is more of a base plastic, and I putt with those for a really, really long time, but I couldn't find, uh, couldn't find my putters for some reason, so we're using these. Oh, pulled it. Oh, I've been doing that so much, pulling everything. So if you see right there, 
all the professionals, I think it's a PDGA rule, have to have like a personalized marking so you can say that is your disc. This is Ezra's right in the middle. Uh, pretty sweet, honestly, just to have something like that. But uh, yeah, really don't want to lose this. All right, next one here, par three, 406 feet. It's kind of just a gradual dog leg to the right. And then the basket is sitting up on a little mound down at the bottom of the hill. I'll zoom in and show it to you afterwards just in case you can't see it from there. But this one is definitely just gonna be FX2. Throw it really flat at these trees right in front and just let the disc do the work. Especially that one, I have thrown that FX2 and it is really, really overstable. So should have no problem getting back to the right here on a forehand. There's the basket. All right, we're just gonna punch this out nice and flat. Let's see if we can't get down there. Oh, that was it, it's too inside though. Yeah, all right, I definitely got all the way down there. I think I'm still in bounds, the road is OB. I think I'm still in bounds. I'm probably pin high, but just way to the right. Yeah, it's interesting that for, I guess how old Prodigy is, which in the grand scheme of things has not been around like crazy long, but still longer than most companies. It's not really considered like a major manufacturer, which surprised me a little bit, but also kind of doesn't just because like at the very beginning, they just went out and signed every big name they possibly could in disc golf. So like Will Sustrick, Yuli, Ricky was on the team, Nicola Castro, uh, I think Paige Pierce, Katrina Allen. So they were kind of like the, the squad was stacked. I'm not quite sure what happened after that where everyone left, but I think ultimately that was kind of the doubt, like the first downfall of it. And I don't know if they've ever been able to like 100% recover from that since. All right, a little deep actually. This is where I landed. I stayed in bounds, which is huge. I am gonna take my meter probably this way. Um, just because on the other side of this hill, on this little mound, there's a, like a sewage grade and your disc can actually fall down in there. It's really poor pin placement when you think about it. it like aesthetically looks great, but then when you see that over there, you're like, dang. Stay up. All right, next one here, par three, 376. This one, at least for me, is probably one of the harder holes in the course. There's just not like a super straight or super obvious gap to the basket. You can either go forehand kind of this way, uh, you can go chop forehand down the middle, or you can go backhand kind of hyzer and let it ride. It's sitting, it's almost like a football and it's sitting down at the back corner. I'll zoom in so you can see it from there too. But yeah, there's just, you gotta really get, it's almost just getting as far out as you can down the fairway, pitching up and then getting a three. At least that's how I play it. I think there's a lot of people better than me that can play this for birdie, but I definitely do not. So for reference, the basket is sitting down right there in the corner. I think I'm gonna go back in with the FX3. This flies the same as an Undertaker from Discraft. Um, which is probably why I like this one so much is because I think right now I have like four Undertakers in my bag. I bagged FX3s for a while and then eventually I've just lost them. And so I, I've had Undertakers, so I've just cycled them into the slot. But I do like this disc, nice straight to stable disc. Oh, I hit the gap, a little lower would have been, or higher would have been nice. Yeah, so I mean, I'm short of this one. I hit the gap though, so I gotta give myself credit for that. But yeah, I'm probably sitting three quarters of the way. It's probably gonna be a little jump putt to tap in. I will say, I think shooting even par out here though is just fine. I've shot five down in the tournament here, um, but that was definitely the best I've ever shot. And I actually, granted I don't play this course a whole lot, but I think that was the only time I've ever shot under par out here, which was fortunate it came in a tournament, 990 rated, what up? Little humble brag, but yeah, anyways, enough of me. Even par out here is really, really good. All right, I actually think I'm going little A2, uh, like soft bid kind of flick at it. And for those that don't know, the A2 is basically just Prodigy's zone. Um, I really like this one because I can't, don't know if you can tell from the profile, but they're not as deep as zones. I think they have the same numbers, like 4303 or something like that. But this one's really flat, not as deep. And I honestly like these more because one, I feel like they're a little more torque resistant, but two, I like having shallower discs because for whatever reason, when I feel like I'm forehanding putters or like deeper mids or even like zones like that, I just feel like I can never get a good grip on it. So I like having, 
I like having like not a lot of room underneath to forehand. I don't know if that makes sense, but just a comfort thing for me really is all it boils down to. But we're gonna see if we can't ring one up here. Ah, uh, short. Mm. It's a good line though. Definitely left myself a little bit of a tester here. Let's go ahead and bang one. That's the uh, one thing I cannot vouch for is Prodigy Baskets, however, which is what these are. I blame these all the time for my poor putting. That one probably could have went 50-50. I hit right side and I got a lot of chains, but spit out. We're on to hole four now, or my hole four. This is actually hole five. Plays very similar to hole one, 349. It's a touch longer, but the angle isn't as severe. So you, it's a little easier to get up there. That being said, it probably still does play about three, you know, 360-ish. Plays long, but we're gonna go D1. Honestly, same shot as hole one and just see if we can actually get up there. A little more juice in it, get up. Yeah, I don't know, probably circles edge or just outside again. I've been playing like an insane amount of disc golf recently. Uh, a lot of tournaments, although this is kind of the grind time for the tournaments. I'm unfortunately going to miss the four states open uh, and then the Missouri Amateur Disc Golf Championship, which I was really looking forward to, but I had uh, plans that I'd forgotten about that I'd already made uh, before I was thinking about playing those tournaments. So. I will be doing those instead. Yeah, let's see how many circle two looks we can get today. Would love to be in circle one, but it is what it is, I guess. Stay out, please. No, man, I've been, been doing that so much. It's like I'm scared. It's like I'm scared of missing and don't want to go long that I just never give it a chance. And that's like, that's happened on some like normal just putts, but a lot of times on the jump putts. Really annoying. We have officially made it to our first four, par four of the video. This is our whole five, 534 feet. Just nice tunnel shot. Pretty difficult, especially now that the grass has kind of grown up off the fairways. Uh, you want to throw a straight shot kind of the middle past this tree. Um, anywhere on either side of that, it's like honestly pretty money. And then the second shot is going to kind of come up into the left, a little dog leg in, so something stable you know, on Heiser that's just gonna ride around the corner. And it's actually sitting kind of on the edge of a little hill. However, if you go in that, uh, it's really not that bad. It's just a little bit unfortunate to have to put uphill, but it really doesn't go that far. I'm gonna try the F7. I've never thrown one before, so we're gonna see how much it flips. I'm just gonna try to get to somewhere around that tree and have some kind of shot in. My main goal is to just not be in the rough left or right. Okay, stay up. Mm. All right, I got a bit nervous. I didn't know how much that was gonna flip. Um, it flipped up and over a little bit. It was too low to really do anything like substantial though. Gonna have a long ways into the basket, but I do have a shot. Yeah, if I'm being honest, and granted the point of this video is to highlight Prodigy, so I'm obviously gonna be, I'm not biased by any means because I honestly like other plastics more. But that being said, I think as far as recent like years, the quality of Prodigy plastic has gone up where I would argue like the quality of Innova's plastic or anyone like that has gone down. I've never been a huge Trilogy guy. I like the Justice, I guess I'll give you that. But Innova's plastic is definitely like a lot glossier, a way like slicker. I don't know if that's the word, but way more slick, not as comfortable in the hands as the old stuff that I have too. So there's definitely something to be said for that as well. Yeah, I think realistically for like an quote unquote easy birdie, definitely easier, you wanna be either at this tree or a little bit beyond. Um, this is definitely not gonna be an easy shot. It's very possible. I'm actually gonna go M2 just cause it's the last one I haven't thrown yet um, for this video, but we're gonna go just try to keep it flat. It's definitely not gonna turn over or anything like that. Just keep it flat and hope that it pushes kind of straight and then hyzers in, you know, where it needs to. Also, for those that don't know, aren't versed in the Prodigy. The M2 is like their version of a rock. Doesn't feel quite the same, uh, but I believe the numbers are the same. Get off the tree. Ah. I don't have a range finder or anything. I think I was just a little short on the distance. It's probably gonna be a little straddle with the A2, or I might have a little jump putt, but a bit short. So far the disc is coming out of the hands really, really nice. Um, I don't think that's Prodigy or anything. I've been working 
consistently working on the stupid backhand form and I hate it so much, but it is getting better, which is good. I definitely need that. Um, I just got to get the confidence with it because still, if I'm playing like competitive or in tournaments, I definitely still lean crazy, crazy heavy on the forehand, but my backhand is getting there, which is nice. Yeah, okay, so two things could have happened. I could have thrown the FX3, which probably would have been a better shot, uh, or I could have just done the M2 harder and maybe got somewhere, you know, in the curve, but I don't think, I still don't think I would have made it to the basket. So FX3 was probably the disc for that, but really wanted to throw the M2. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's fine. That was not a good shot by any means. I have a pretty bad problem with throwing like Anheuser, like a little poke around shots like that because I have a tendency to go higher, which makes that angle way steeper. And then I end up just turfing everything. So I actually got that one flat how I wanted to. And I just, in my brain, thought I was going to turn it over and actually threw a pretty nice shot. So all things considered, it was like a win-lose maybe. I don't know. All right, I was fortunate enough to not go down into the ditch. I also don't know if I framed this right, so if you can't see me, I apologize. Oh, there we go. All right, hole six here. Might be tough to see. It's 334 par three. Uh, for me, it's going to be nice high hyzer around these trees. The sun is glaring right into the camera, so if you can't see it, I apologize. At the very least, you'll see where it lands, which is kind of the important part. I'm going to go D1, hyzer around the trees. Hopefully crash in. I gave this one a scare a couple times. I really like this hole. So we're gonna see if we can't ring one up. Well, that was quite unfortunate. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna excuse this guy. I've admitted that. Those people were walking. I've got people behind me. So I'm trying to play through without them catching up and keeping the flow. Hit the tree. We're gonna throw another one. I think we're gonna go skill shot though. F7 on a turnover and see what happens. Oh, it's better. Man, I just, that's, I mean, that's short. I'm just bad at throwing Anheuser in the air because I want to bring it down instead of just kind of bringing it like out and around. Regardless, not great shots. This one may not go in. I'm going to jump putt, but one thing it's not going to do is miss short. Uh, okay. I really hope you couldn't see that either <laughs> because I didn't in fact miss short. All right, hole seven here, 399 feet, plays way downhill. It plays a lot easier now because you can kind of see this, this short stuff. It's getting taller now, but that all used to be trees and brush and everything. And if you got in there, there was no way to get out except pitching backwards. So the fact that that's gone now makes it like maybe one of like the three legit ace runs on the course now. I'm gonna go FX2 out wide, let it crash in. I honestly might throw a couple depending on how good this one is. It is a bit unfortunate because where I'm standing, the basket is straight, but the tee pad points straight this way. So I don't know if there was a redesign at some point, uh, but kind of a weird run up. Yeah, definitely inside C1 for sure. I was kind of hoping for a little skip towards the basket. I'm probably, but I'm probably 20 short, but should still make this one. Oh, I thought that was too high. It wasn't. All right, that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope, I really hope I changed your mind on some Prodigy. I understand the complaints from even so much as kind of like last season, but anything they're making now is much better quality without the flashing. They feel great. They have the same discs as every other company. Every company makes the same disc. So I really hope you'll try them and to hopefully get some Prodigy in your hands at OzarkMountainDisc.com. We are doing all Prodigy discs are 20% off indefinitely until we decide to change it. I have no idea, but when this video comes out, all Prodigy is gonna be 20% off. And I really do hope you guys try some because it is good stuff. I still bag a ton. I know a lot of people that bag a ton and I'm sure they'll vouch for it. So head over to OzarkMountainDisc.com now. Pick yours up today. That is it, OzarkMountainDisc to the moon. We'll see ya.